it was not part of our thought at all, given that we were not alcoholic drinkers. I was never a bartender. I just drank beer. I, you know, I really didn't make drinks at home. I drank beer. Amanda here, and welcome to episode 51 of Great Beer Adventure. First off, happy Father's Day. I know a lot of dads will be enjoying some grilling this weekend, and we have a great show to pair with that. I sit down with Steve Corman and discuss beer cocktails. As I dive more and more into this adventure, I am learning that you need to let go of fears and just try new things. Mixing spirits and beer seems a bit scary, but actually is quite awesome. When you decide what beers you want to feature in your cocktails, head over to Oak Hill Beverage. Oak Hill is located in Saco, Maine and has all your beer, cider, and wine needs. Head over to oakhillbeverage.com for store hours. For now, let's go on over to Vina's Fizz House and learn more about beer cocktails. Hey, everybody. I am sitting at an empty bar today because it is a Tuesday when we are recording and Venus Fizz House is actually closed. So it's nice and quiet. And we're in for a very big treat because we are here today with Steve Corman. And welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Amanda. And welcome to Venus Fizz House. <laughs> thank you. Uh, today, we're going to talk about beer cocktails. It's getting to be summertime and it's going to be super exciting. Um, but first, we're going to actually start with something that I do where I go out and I Google you and I tell you everything I found out about you. Okay, so correct me at any point. Sure. <laughs> um, so I kept it brief because there's actually quite a bit out there. Um, I saw that you were um, a teacher for 19 years and you taught middle school math. Middle school and high school. Uh, for most of my life, I've been a resource teacher at both ends. Wow. More and more, I'm finding teachers in this space. Uh, I think there's something to really look into there. Why do teachers end up in the alcohol industry? That is a really <laughs> good question, how we all end up in the alcohol industry. We all have our own ideas. We all have our own pathways to this place. And if you asked me four years ago this is where I'd be today, it's like, no way would my wife and I even think of us being owners of a bar. Yes. All right? So we are, we really are not cocktail drinkers. We didn't grow up as in families that drank at all. Both of our families don't really drink. And yet we started as post-adolescents loving beer. And now I am mixing cocktails. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Vienna's Fizz House actually started in 2013, and it was named after a prohibitionist. My wife's great-grandmother, Irvina, short name, her, her nickname was Vina, was a prohibitionist, big in the main Christian temperance movement in the 1920s here in Portland. But we started this bar as a non-alcoholic bar. So in honor of a prohibitionist, we named it after her never thinking we would ever get into the world of alcohol. Yes, when I when I first came in here, it was probably around the time that you guys opened, and there was no talk of alcohol whatsoever. It was not part of our thought at all, given that we were not alcoholic drinkers. I was never a bartender. I just drank beer. I, you know, I really didn't make drinks at home. I drank beer. But we started, it all started out as... I got a pink slip three years ago from Portland Public Schools, and we had to do something, so my wife creates this. Now, I had to learn. I, I really went to YouTube videos, how to be a bartender, what this is called. I always knew a jigger was a measuring tool, but I didn't know the word jigger was a jigger, and there were so many different types of jiggers and how to hold them and how to pour, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is all new knowledge that I gained over, and I still learn every day. I, uh, I, it's, I did not find the piece that it was Portland Public Schools, but I actually ended up getting a pink slip and heading down for Sa to Sanford. And then I YouTube my way to podcast 
knowledge. Like it's <laughs> For all you teachers out there, there is life after education. But unlike most places, we are in an educational bar. We teach daily on bitters, on mixology. And here you are. I'm going to teach you about beer cocktails. Yeah. Um, the last thing that I wanted to mention is actually, um, I don't know if it's still open or uh, Pearl Seaside Market on Cliff Island. So you were out on the island? Being a teacher, we never really get enough money to do to relax during the summer. So we found an island out in Casco Bay called Cliff Island, and we set up shop as the only store cafe owner. We did that for we lived on this island for two years full time. This is two hours out to sea. And then, because my kids were getting older, they really didn't want to take the ferry to middle or high school, so we found a house to buy in Portland. The minute we moved off the island, it became a seasonal place. But fun. Yeah, I've actually been out to Cliff Island before. Oh, cool. Um, And that must have been quite the commute into work every day. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but anyhow, anyhow, (laughs) it's over. We're not there anymore. We're here. We're based in Portland. We're, I'm three miles away to get to Venus Fizz House. Very nice. Yay. Okay. So our first round is drinking. So you've got a number of ingredients out and I'm ready to see what you're going to do with them. I'm pretty excited about this. All right. (laughs) This is, um, I created this with the owner of Coffee by Design. She was here one day in the wintertime. I said, listen, I got my beer license. Let's hang out and let's create a couple drinks. So like I told you, I'm a beer drinker. I'm starting to really get into certain alcohols. I love mezcal. I love tequila. I love botanical gins. So I said, let's, let's start out with mezcal. And because I'm adding about six ounces of beer... I'm only putting an ounce of mezcal because mezcal is really smoky. It's really strong. I don't want to overpower anybody that especially is a beer drinker that wants to go elsewhere. So I, I told her, I said, lime or lemon. I, give her the, I gave Mary Ellen the choice. She said, try lemon. So I put in one ounce of mezcal, one ounce of lemon. I said, because of the smoke, I'm going to add some heat. So I had... Serrano pepper, serrano pepper, maybe a quarter, you know, of a teaspoon. I just sliced them up. Serrano is about 10 times hotter than jalapeno. I wanted something. Hey, I deal with ghost pepper in one third of all my mocktails, non-alcoholic drinks. So I know what heat is, but I'm not going to overload anybody. So um, the only thing I missed out in is some sweetener. Doesn't matter if you're, if you're the most bitter, you know, drinking person. You need something to balance. So, agave nectar, perfect with tequila mezcal. And besides the alcohol, I'm done. Okay. Except for the bitters, I'm done. So I'm going to. I'm muddling the serrano, not by muddling it, but by shaking with ice. The, the peppers and the smoke are a little intimidating. <laughs> I'm getting my a, a head shaking. No, I, I should be Do fine. All right, notice no bitters, no beer yet. If I shook with beer, it would foam, it would foam all out. All right, so I'm going to strain out the peppers. With a strainer, also no ice, so I'm going to add ice in. I'm going to estimate what six ounces of beer would look like with the ice. So you added to that a Fry's Leap IPA. Fry's Leap IPA. I'm only using, oh, if you drink alcohol here, you'll notice that most every one of my drinks, except for tequila, mezcal, and all the amaros and digestives, are from Maine. Oh, very nice. I'm one of the only bars I know of that is just really pushing Maine products. Okay, so... Let me go through. This is great for Father's Day, by the way. It's not gin. It's not vodka. It's it's mezcal. It takes and there's some heat there. There's agave there. There's lemon there. Frisley by PA. No bitters. Taste this. Okay. Don't be afraid. <laughs> I'm trying not to be. Oh, it has. I like the the mezcal smell. I like that. It does have a tequila flavor, but it doesn't. It's not really that smoky and. 
there's a freshness to it almost that the um, pepper's add? For me, for every one of my beer cocktails, when I mix it without the bitters, it's a beer with something in the background. With this one, you definitely can tell there's some agave there. There's some mezcal or tequila. So now we add the bitters. Okay. All right? So hops bitters. Dylan Spirits of Ontario, Canada makes some fantastic bitters, hops bitters for hoppy beer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to balance this drink. I want to, because this is a, a lot of beer in here, I'm going to bring the beer down with a hops bitter, and then I'm going to bring the tequila or mezcal up with a Castilian bitter from Miracle Mile of California. So here we go. I'm just going to have you experience just okay. with the beer bitter. It's a totally different drink now. Okay. Okay. It, it's shocking to me that the hops bitters would bring the beer down instead it's, of elevate it. It's taking the hops and bringing it down. Oh, yeah. That does taste completely different. Okay. The oh, no, no, no. Like... Okay. So now I'm going to bring the mezcal up. Okay. Taste that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Every time that I taste it, it tastes different. So, is it balanced? And that's, I would say that it is, That's yeah. what, can you taste the mezcal? Can you taste some heat? Can you taste some agave? And can you taste the IPA? Yeah, I think that it really makes my, uh, my tongue wonder what's going on. And with a uh, lemon peel, with the essence of lemon oil, that's my fries a leapin. Oh. That's what we call it. This taste with all the acidity that's going on with all the lemons and it tastes like one of the most amazing margaritas i have ever had like if i could just have a picture of this on cinco de mayo that'd be fabulous um i also imagine it'd be pretty good with some stuff on the grill right absolutely absolutely beautiful it's paired with almost anything that you can eat with whether it's fish or chicken or meat no have one more sip before I change okay. everything <laughs> to show you how easy it is for anybody, as long as you have ingredients at home. Um, aperitifs amaros are bitter, like a Campari or Aperol. Well, this is Cadamaro. I'm just going to pour a little on top. I'm not going to stir it up. Now, when you drink, sip, smell it. You're going to smell it naturally. Just okay. check that out. It's more bitter. Oh, yeah. A lot more bitter. Yeah, are you okay? I'm okay. okay. Yeah, I want to have just... a sip. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want it. Smells great. Yeah. The mezcal is coming right through. That's what I wanted. The beer is there. Mm-hmm. The hops is there. It's beautiful drink. It's balanced. I love the Amaro. I love this drink. Yeah, I'm a it's... guy. I'm a father. I would love to drink this on Father's Day. So you should make it for Dad uh, this Father's Day. Uh, cook him up a nice uh, chicken steak or fish on the grill and make something like this. And then usually if we're in a bar, you can't really get any of the ingredients. But you guys in the front, do you have some of these things? We have all the ingredients. We're not an agency liquor store, so you can't buy beer or alcohol. But we have all the bitters, all the ingredients, and we give away recipes. That's the difference. We teach people on a daily basis. I am getting emails with pictures. This is what I bought. Send me the recipes. Nice. And we do that because we are we have an online store at www.venusfizzhouse.com. Online, you can buy everything online. We don't charge for handling. We only charge for retail and the shipping. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. One time a few years ago, we were in. A lot has happened in a few years. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we bought these absolutely delicious um, maple sugar cubes. And that we've had so much fun playing around with those. and We're just... producing um, habanero sugar cubes, habanero infused sugar cubes, bitter infused sugar cubes, iron infused, aromatic infused. Wow. We have infusion kits. Um, it's pretty wild what's going on with us. Yeah. It's fun. Um, so there's a lot more information that we want to know, and I'm going to continue sipping on this, I think, because it's so good. Um, but this is a great point to move into round two. Before we do, we're going to take just a quick break. Hey folks, in studio Amanda here, and I wanted to take just a quick second to tell you about a great event we are putting on. We are partnering up with the Maine Beer Tours to host Camp Azaka Hops, a two-night sleepaway camp for women. 
It will take place this fall and include a lot of beer-centric activities, including yoga, home brewing, and, of course, drinking. If you or an awesome beer-drinking lady you know would like more information, join our Facebook group by heading to greatbeeradventure.com slash camp. Now, back to mid-interview, Amanda. So while we were on our little break, I actually asked about what would be good staples to have at home. Um, And you gave me a a slightly different answer. You told me that you would help somebody customize. Absolutely. Right now, I can give you any recipe for any type of IPA in any type of wheat ale, whether it's a Hefeweizen or, or, or... I'm using Allagash White, which is a Belgian wheat beer. Um, But I could easily give you a recipe for a stout or for a pale ale. I'm trying to, I will be making a deal with a a local pale ale producer, brand new as of February, to start creating drinks using their beer. Very nice. My thing is just, I need more time. Right. We're training people now so that I don't have to be a bartender here, except for Saturdays and Sundays, so I can do whatever, really what I want to do. So what people need, basically, are bitters to balance everything. Because without bitters, for me, it's a beer drink with something in the background, and you really can't tell what it is. Bitters bitters do for beer cocktails what they do for regular cocktails, what they do for sodas, and it's what herb, spice, salt, pepper does for everyone's food. It's the same thing. They're botanicals. They're herbs and spices, barks and roots infused with a bittering root, a bittering agent. It's an infusion for two to three weeks, boiled down, bottled. So we use it the same way to enhance, to grab onto. So if I have a chocolate soda and if I use a chocolate bitter, it's going to appear to be unbelievable chocolatey, more chocolatey. The first taste up in your mouth, it's going to be, oh my God, that's chocolate. It's deep compared to, so when I gave you, you said perfectly with the hops bitter, you thought it was going to pull it up. And I'm saying it's going to grab it and pull it down because hops like bitters are deep, you know, heavier. Mm -hmm. It's a hard way to explain. It's much easier to experience. Some bitters and hands go this way and some go the other way. So is there is there a specific alcohol that goes well with IPAs? Like if you're doing IPA, a short fire would be the mezcal or I've created in two nights using vodka, using gin, using reposado tequila, using silver tequila, using mezcal. For me, I just need time to um, play around with I have so many ingredients and so many bitters, which are, but with the IPA, hops bitters does it. If you're an IPA drinker, you're going to use hops. If you're a, a wit bear, I'm using Bolivar. All right. And that's part and parcel of what we do. One thing that I've kind of, I drink a lot of beer and I try a lot of different beers, Yeah. but I'm nervous about making them into something because I like Fry's Leap IPA. Why am I going to mess with it? So I think there's like this nervousness that I have that I'm going to mess it up and then I'll have messed up my Fry's Leap. All right. So I'll tell you my idea about when I picked up hops bitters and I'm an IPA drinker and I put it in a local IPA beer and it made it bitter. It brought it down a little. And I didn't like it as much. Hmm. I like the pure right. of taking it from a bottle. I really like my IPAs that way or a draft in a mug. But in a cocktail, you're talking to an, a true beer drinker. I never thought I'd get into alcohol. So we've had this license for a full year. I've been, we've been talking as you know business owners. I don't want to be a regular bar. I don't want to have taps of beer. I don't have bottles of all these different wines, but I want to create drinks with wine, with beer. So I always said, okay, just get the license. I got the license and now I'm creating and it's pure fun to create. You have no idea how fun it is to create cocktails or to drink, create beer cocktails. It's just another ingredient. And to find beer drinkers that are getting into, they're one of the hottest items here at Venus Fizz House. It's unbelievable how many cocktails using beer we sell. It's way cool. 
Yeah. Uh, actually, I learned about the fact that you sold alcohol because I hadn't even heard that news from Josh Christie, who is a local author and um, bookstore owner. Um, and he big into the beer world. That's right. He's written so many beer books. Yeah. <laughs> Over at Sherman's on exchange. Let's bring it out there. Yeah. Get here in the um, and yeah, he was telling me, I was like, I put it out to um, a Facebook group, a Facebook group that I'm part of. I was like, where can I get beer cocktails? And he's like, I don't know if they're doing beer cocktails, but I imagine they have beer there. So they probably are. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's very, very intriguing to me that I don't know that you, you said it's fun. And I think that that really made me think, you know, how am I going to bring this into my life? Because I, I do get nervous that I'm going to, but I think this would be a really great date night, you know? Fantastic for high schoolers not drinking alcohol. Great for people of age drinking alcohol or non-alcohol. When you come to my bar, you really can't tell who's drinking alcohol and who isn't. We're using the same glassware. We're using the same bitters. We're using the same ingredients, except one's getting seltzer and one's getting spirits. That's it. Well, I think it would be great to try to do this at home, too. That's where I get, like, come here, grab some ingredients, you know, That's like, it. And we'll tell you. We'll teach you. We'll yeah. write things down. We'll email you what to do. Um, I think that would be so much fun to that's do. That's a piece of our business, teaching people how to make quality drinks. That's it. Okay, ready for the next one? All right, let's do it. <laughs> Called Hefeflus. Hefeflus. I'm um, using Bimini Gin from Bitterford, Maine. Darren Case, an amazing producer. Now, I'm using one and a half ounces and I'm going to use a little less of the uh, of the beer. That's it. So, took me a while. I wanted to bring in some acidity, so I'm using a shrub. Shrubs are a fruit-infused vinegar. This is grapefruit. Grapefruit and vodka, grapefruit and gin really can go well together. All right? So, we're going to I just cut it in half. Like 0.75, 3 quarters of an ounce. A um, little lemon. And again, all these drinks, almost every drink I make, cocktail, whatever, the proportions are very similar and the ingredients are very similar, except that instead of a shrub, I might be using a simple syrup. Instead of a simple syrup, I might be using a puree. Instead of a puree, I might be using a liqueur. That's all. But basically, it's all the same. Um, just need a little simple syrup. Not a lot. Because this is sweet. It's okay. also acidic. So now your simple syrup, ha like, is that with a brown sugar or a honey? It's with organic cane. That's wow. why it's really dark. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of like almost a nice tea yeah. shade of color. No, it's this pure organic cane it's sugar with water. We use Portland, you know, public Portland water. Portland water is so great. Yeah. We already okay. found this out many times. Unli unlike the last drink, I'm going to add the bitters to okay. it, okay? So it's a wheat beer, a white ale. I'm using Bolivar bitters. Bolivar I use in so many... Um, drinks that have ingredients dealing with grass, mint, um, small fruits, leaves like basil or thyme. I don't know what's in it except there's got to be a lot of small fruits and small <laughs> leaves and it works fine. So, so that, covers, um, that covers the ale. For the gin, I need lavender bitters. Oh, dealing with the floral notes of the gin, and I'm not going to put much in. That's it. So um, another place that I have been to that uses the lavender is um, Maine Mead Works. And they actually, when they are talking about it, they say there's a little bit of a, a spiciness when they're doing, using it in their honey white wine, their mead. Do you get that in the bitters a little? It depends on the bitter that I'm using. Some of my bitters have some hot peppers in it, but... Some people will take um, ginger as heat or clove as but heat. But do you get it from the cinnamon. lavender? That's the From one. the lavender bitter? You tell me. Here we go. Give me your hand. Okay. Oh, it, it smells like straight it's, up lavender. It is lavender, pure lavender. Only slightly, only like a very slight, but not really like. It must be something about how the honey works with it. So light and frothy. And you poured the whole thing in there, ice this time too. Yeah, because I didn't have any Ready? peppers in there. Um...
Now, when you put it in, you do it very, the very slow stir, so not to make the beer go crazy. I want to drink <laughs> this. I don't want you to have it. I want to oh, drink no. it. I'm not going to be allowed to have any. It is absolutely delicious. It smells good, but it, I think it must be the gin, the smell of the gin coming out. Oh, that is really good. It's hard to explain. You're like, hey, you just took it right back. He's not late. Let me have that one. Um, yeah, that one's really... I don't even know how to explain it. The gin's there. The beer is there. I'm not a... I'm really not a um, Belgian wheat beer lover. A lot of people love it. I really am a pure IPA. I'll drink some pale ale sometime, but um, that's delicious. It is quite tasty, yeah. Um... I was surprised that with all the different bitters and shrubs and everything that this, <laughs> the, 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 the smell, the smell of it's very uh, low. It's a very subtle smell. And really the thing I can get out of it is just the gin. You taste the, the beer? I can taste it. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, I get the lemon and I get that gin. It's just almost like a amazing lemonade <laughs> is what it smells like almost. All our palates are different. Yeah. It's really an interesting business to be in. The flavor is not anything like that, but I don't know. It's good. It's good. It's it make, it, All these drinks really have me trying to, like, my tongue has no idea what to do. <laughs> it's This is a new world dealing with different bit. You've never had these bitters before yeah. changing the complexity and flavors. Um, so this is just a different place that people get turned on to. I have over 200 bitters that I'm playing with in back of me. And yeah, there's a lot of bitters yeah, behind yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. And the bitters are what makes these drinks. It's yeah. not the ingredients per se. I'm, I'm playing with the ingredients via the bitters, just like cooks do with herbs and spices. Right. Um, you had mentioned that you're, you had really wanted to play and have fun. Um, is there something that kind of inspired that? Is there a reason that you decided you were playing a lot with no alcohol? Is there something that inspired you to bring beer into the mix and other alcohols as well? It wasn't that we were stagnant doing non-alcoholic drinks for 20 months. I was learning, learning, learning. Then we got our alcoholic license. Having an alcoholic license, I have hundreds of recipes that I've yet to bring to the bar. Hundreds. Haven't tasted them yet. I just started creating them. Before I sat down... And created these beer cocktails, 20 minutes sitting at a table. I said, okay, let's play with these. And I had options of shrubs and options of bitters. I was pretty fairly stringent in which bitters I was going to play with because I know which bitters go with which ingredients. Now, when I'm putting these ingredients together, especially with beer, I'm changing the medium slightly. So I was not 100% sure, but I knew what I want to start with. Okay. Making drinks is just pure pleasure for someone that is in this business. Um, I go to Flanagan's table in Buxton once a month. They tell me what color they're, they want their drink, and then I produce <laughs> an alcoholic drink. That's that color. This coming June, the color is green. I already have in my mind what I'm going to, I sort of have my recipe because of just experience. Yeah. That's all. That's all. It's experience. And I'm gaining experience on a daily basis. Does it just give you more ingredients to play with? Is it just make it that much bigger? Beer is different and people have not created these drinks ever. You can find online from 2010, 2012, these cocktails using beer, it's like without the bitters, they're not real. You cannot really taste flavors without these bitters bringing something down or bringing something up for the balance. Every bartender knows in the city, when you make a drink, you want everything to be balanced. Right. When you're creating two, three, four, five, you know, ingredients in one cocktail, you don't want to lose any of those three, four, five ingredients. You want the person drinking to be able to taste those flavors. Yeah. It's fun. It does. It really, to me, it sounds... Sometimes when I'm cooking and I'm in a in a creative spot and not a the kids need to eat spot, you know, it feels almost like you're 
playing and you're painting and you're making a picture with the food. And it sounds a lot like that with the alcohol. That's it. That's it. Plus, when you have the kitchen cabinet full of ingredients, that will change the flavor, the complexity, the balance. The, you know, yeah. that's it. I don't know of anybody in the world that has what I have in back of me. And that, for me, it's like, for new people learning, it's like not so overloading when we slowly teach them. Yeah, it, um, there's a couple of Whole Foods that actually have breweries in them. And it's, somebody had mentioned when they were talking about it is they literally have a whole pantry outside the brewery doors. They can go and grab anything. And it really feels like that's the same way here. You can just be like, mm, let's turn around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's see what's behind me and yeah. add it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Throughout this, uh, we're coming up on a year for our um, podcast. We're almost a year old. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and through this adventure, um, I've definitely found, you know, people out there that are having the most fun with the beer are the ones that are willing to experiment and try new things. And um, we've tried some really great blended beers, so taking two beers and bringing them together. Um, and this takes it to a whole nother level. <laughs> and so I'm really excited to play around with some of this stuff and try it out. It's cool. Very cool. It, it's inspiring to be able to be like, all right, there's no rules. You don't have to. There just, are. Right. Yeah. There's, there's you so get juices at home. You just need the bitters. Right. Um, you have lemons and limes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you get al Do you have alcohol? Do you drink at home besides beer? We've got some. We don't okay. have a lot. But that's good enough. Yeah. You have something. Right. <laughs> it can be used. Exactly. Just Yay. put some stuff together. Yeah. It's very, very inspiring. And I think that I've become a lot a lot more open to trying different things. There's a lot of people out there that actually think like, if you are drinking a stout, it must be in this glass and it's like proper glassware. So I think those people might have, their head might explode <laughs> if you started <laughs> making drinks like this for them. But I think that, you know, one thing that's really great about beer here in Portland uh, is that it's such a community. It's, you know, people working together. And you were talking right at the beginning that you called up somebody from Coffee by Design. You were, you know, worked on a drink together. Oh, the collaboration with bars, distillers, um, brewmasters, unbelievable. We're here to help each other. Yeah. It, we're not really in competition with anybody. We all help each other. Yeah. And Portland yeah. Maine's a very, very creative spot. And I really love it. We just had a podcast episode where we discussed that here in Portland, Maine, whatever your flag is, you should feel free to fl fly it. That's right. No matter what free yeah. flag you have, <laughs> go yeah. for it. Yeah. And everybody be just like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. This is fabulous. Is there anything else we should know about beer and cocktails? Oh, I'm still learning. Is okay. there any more? Sure, there's a lot more. But if you have... If you don't have ingredients, if you have an idea, please come by and talk to us. We can help you. Um, we can definitely help you, and we definitely can match what you want with bitters that will easily help you create. I do. I, I actually have one one more question. So, a lot of venues, um, if there's a bride or something out there, don't allow hard alcohol, but they'll let beer and wine. Would you, if they came in, would you be able to work and? you know, make a signature cocktail out of beer? Or I wine? do this almost every week, especially now that it's, um, you know, it's marriage season, June's yeah. upon us, um, just making deals, whether I'm going to be there creating or sending them with bases, but definitely beer cocktails, definitely I can help them. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, quick little shout out, make sure you go to venusfizzhouse.com. Yep. Venusfizzhouse.com. Just Google us. You'll find us. All right. Okay, let's move right into round three. Okay. All right, so round three is your first beer memory. I am visiting Long Island with one of my best friends when I was 13. Um, unfortunately, my best friend at the time died, I think it was about 2022. Um, he had epilepsy. It was just rough. But when we were, when we were at his uncle's house, his uncle said, I'm going out for some beer. You want some? And I looked at Andy and I said, sure, let's get, let's get, um, Colt 44 malt liquor. <laughs> it's like, he said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. It's like, I never had a beer in my life. I saw that in advertisements and it's like, why not try it? 
that stuff was nasty, but we drank. <laughs> we drank one and got wasted on one. I bet we were 13, never had alcohol before. Um, so it wasn't a fond memory. Um, I can imagine in the moment um, it really wasn't no, that No, 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 no. But, but by the time I was 16, um, I had friends that owned bars. So we got in, we were already drinking beer, and it was Schlitz. It was Budweiser, a f- tap, you know. Yeah, Schlitz Draft, I remember. This is in the early 70s. I grew up in Massachusetts, so yay for Governor Mike Dukakis. <laughs> Had the drinking age lower to 18 when I was 17. So when I was 18, I was legally drinking beer. It's like fantastic. I was a senior in high school drinking beer. Yeah, it's a good way to get through high school. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got through. <laughs> high then, school's rough. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so that that's the all of round three. Round four is pretty, uh, oh, which is, we're okay. right at the tail end. Cool. Uh, so round four, uh, we call it three sheets of the wind, three random questions. We've had a couple of beer cocktails. Um, and now the questions aren't random in the fact that they're different each time. They're random in the fact that they don't really have anything to do with beer. Okay. So okay. question number one is, back when you were a kiddo, uh, what was your favorite cartoon? Roadrunner, probably. I love Bugs Bunny. I was really a, a Three Stooges fan, aficionado. I would watch Three Stooges before I would watch cartoons, but when I was a kid, it was Roadrunner. I've never actually seen that many episodes of Three Stooges. What is it about? Slapstick comedy by two brothers and a cousin in the 1930s. They made it big. Did they, um, were they actually related or was that just... Oh, yeah, no, no, they they were. were, They were. Mo Howard, Larry Howard, and uh, Curly Howard. They were two brothers and a cousin. Wow. Yeah. Um, And there wasn't a lot of talking in them, was there? No, it was, it was. It, but I remember the noises. That's the only thing that like really is in like they that. Were, they were physical comedic actors. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the form of like a, a Michael Richards on Seinfeld. It was fun. Got me through uh, adolescent and, adolescence and early uh, childhood. <laughs> uh, so the next question is, what song is stuck in your head right now? Oh, boy. Um, how about Thelonious Monk, Blue Monk? Oh, I haven't heard that one. Oh, jazz, piano, jazz. yeah. All yeah. right. We uh, we do show notes for the episode, and we put a YouTube link up there. Oh, so, cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. So there'll be some uh, Three Stooges, and there'll be some <laughs> uh, Blue Monk up there as well. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Yay, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yay. laughs> uh, okay, and the final question is, yeah. what was the best thing you had to eat this week? This week? My cook, about a week ago, said, you hungry? I said, I'm starving. He said, why don't you take these beet greens home? I said, nah, it's not going to make it. I'm not going to. He said, I'll make them for you. I'm doing nothing downstairs. So he washed them, sauteed them with garlic. He took the stalks and leaves. Unbelievable. I took a quart home. They were still hot. Brought them home, fried up tempeh with soy sauce with these beets drizzled with balsamic um, vinaigrette unbelievable beautiful wow Unbe- you weren't ready for that one but no. beets with balsamic vinegar it was like blue three of us away my daughter my wife and myself wow yeah that sounds delicious there you go um and i kind of lie i said that was the last question but okay. i have to bring it back to beer yeah um did you pair that with anything I had a shipyard monkey fist with that. Nice. Was it exactly paired correctly? Probably not, but <laughs> damn, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. um, I did, speaking of the monkey fist, I actually did my own um, uh, beer mixing at the tasting room. They have a melon head, and it tastes a lot like Jolly Rancher. Like, too much for my <laughs> yeah, taste buds. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> yeah. But I paired it with um, the monkey fist. Yeah. And blended it, and it actually made it taste really good. So, yeah. The buddy mixologist. Here, here I am. I just got a, more YouTubing to do, and I'll be there. All right. All I'll, right. I'll, I'll put an application next year. <laughs> cool. Very cool. <laughs> thank you so much oh, for joining us. Thank I you, really Amanda. really appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, happy Father's Day to all your fathers. Yes, happy Father's Day. Cheers to you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much to Steve Corman for sharing those tasty concoctions with us. Venus Fizz House is a fun little spot, so make sure you swing in the next time you are in Portland. Also, a big thank you to our sponsor, Oak Hill Beverage, a fantastic place to get inspired for your next beer cocktail. For links to all of this amazingness, check out greatbeeradventure.com slash 051. And if you, our loyal listeners, would like to help support Great Beer Adventure, head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash support. You'll be directed to our Patreon account where you can show us the love for as little as a dollar an episode. Want to know more? Be sure to find us on Instagram at Great Beer Women. If you haven't done so already, be sure to head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash subscribe to subscribe. That way, you'll be the first to know when a new episode goes live. Also, don't forget to tell your friends about us. A small party is fun, but a huge party is extraordinary. Let's get more people knowing about beer in the great state of Maine. Great Beer Adventure is part of the Great Pint Society.